partition's gift. There. Now can I have an echo? <laughs> Ten years ago, my husband Mason, my dear friend Paul, and I went to New Orleans for the 30th anniversary of the Westgate Gallery, the world's only gallery devoted exclusively to necromantic art and literature. We had the pleasure to link up with morbid curiosity artists Mike Hunter and Elizabeth West for a magnificent dinner in the French Quarter before cabbing up to the gallery. Leela Wendell, Westgate's owner, greeted us once we arrived. As the first band began to play, people packed the gallery. Many of them had been to the annual Amorize Vampire Ball the previous night. Reprising their costumes, they were dressed in farthingales, powdered wigs, the whole deal. It was almost Halloween in New Orleans. The night was probably 90% humidity. I melted just looking at the vampire folk, so I escaped to the slightly cooler air of the porch with Mason and Paul. Before long, Leila tracked me down. There's someone I would like you to meet. He's a mortician. Grinning, I followed our hostess back to the sauna of the gallery. He was an older gentleman, dressed all in black. About my height, he wore a wide-brimmed hat and a black and burnous coat. A monocle glinted in his right eye. I swept my hand up to be kissed. I arrange autopsies for writers. I've done them for Clive Barker and Bobby Bright, among others. If you're interested, it would be my pleasure to show you anything you want to see. I'm flattered by the offer, I said, but I'm in no hurry to mess with cadavers again. Uh, but I can show you things you've never seen before, he promised. Oh <laughs> Opening newly dead people would be much different than exploring preserved teaching cadavers. While I pondered his offer, he asked if I had a strong stomach. Well, I reminded him, I do publish more of a curiosity. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> There's something I'd like to show you. He glanced over his shoulder. We need to go someplace private where no one can see. In my head popped the bizarro cartoon of the guy at the dance with the two left feet in the paper bag. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I thought, where is Mason? Of course, we were standing in the hallway at Westgate, a Victorian house pass packed canvas to casket with 150 people. There really wasn't anywhere too private. The mortician led me into the front room under Leela's 12-foot statue of the Angel of Death. He turned away from me to open his inverness. Oh, I thought, here it comes. For some reason, I expected he peeled back his coat to show me he was horribly scarred, mangled, <laughs> had a joint twin, dangled on his throat, some kind of hideous physical thing. Instead, he handed me a Polaroid. I got lightheaded from the shock of the mundane. Then my eyes locked onto the image of the photograph. A dozen heads lay on a morgue table. They'd all been severed at the neck. They represented varying stages of decomposition, some green, others yellow. Their eyes rolled upward, mouths gaped. It looked like a scene from hell. I had never seen anything like this in my life. The black and white images of Ouija's corpses, Luke Sante's evidence, the gory alarm of carnage, is all removed from the viewer by virtue of being captured on glossy pages, trapped between the covers of the book. Those cadavers had already passed through the hands of a photographer, author, editor, printer, distributor, and shop owner before they reached me. Death was safely at bay. Now I was facing a man who had removed a dozen heads. My voice may have squeaked when I asked, did you take the photo? Yes, I did some work for a university in Texas studying the deaths of indigents. When I had all their heads off, the moment was surreal enough that I thought I ought to document it. <laughs> Old blood ran in dark rivulets down the stainless steel tabletop. Some of the dead people seemed almost peaceful. I studied them, noting one's strong like hair, the jaundiced yellow of another's eyes, a third cyanotic lips. I handed the photo back with my thanks. I was all pretty. I don't remember too much of the conversation past that point. Mason located me, and after a brief introduction, I excused us. It was all I could do not to skip as we left the party. <laughs> as soon as we collected Paul, I burst out with, You'll never believe what I've just seen. There's nothing like a little horror to make you glad to be alive. That was my aim with Morbid Curiosity magazine and now with this book. Because an inoculation of the real every now and again makes you treasure good friends, beautiful art, a deep breath, a good cry, a morning awakening without pain, or a spanking that draws blood. <laughs> <laughs>
make the most of what you've got because it's all going to end too damn soon. And that's beautiful too. Thank you so much. Yeah.